Moving on to tactics for integrated negotiations. Integrated negotiations require collaboration. They require information because you are trying to come to a win-win. You're trying to add value. You're trying to get to a place where you both walk away having created something that you couldn't have individually. So this is called, as I said, integrative negotiations. Some key features of this form of negotiation. You've got to be careful that you don't make an offer too quickly. Either your side or receive an offer too quickly. You need to take time to gather information about both sides and to assess that information. So even if somebody makes an offer quickly, you need to say, can we set that aside just for a little bit while we just gather some more information? I'd like to know a little bit more about you. Is that okay? And then you want to be asking for um, information about their skill sets, the things that they bring to the table, their history, their background, all of that you might discover something that you don't know about them. Uh, convey as much of that information as you can. What are your concerns? Why are you wanting to enter into this um, negotiation? What, what is their reasoning? What are they offering? Get as much of that information as well because the more you have, the more you can actually win a win-win. Remember we talked about earlier on about that orange and how it's really easy just to cut it in half. And so you've both got half-half. But when you had a conversation and you said, what do you need the orange for? And they said, well, I, I want the flesh. I want to eat the orange. And the other one says, um, I want to do some cooking, and so I need to grate the, the peel. As you had that conversation, the more you know, the more you're able to say, well, why don't you, know, you have the flesh and I have the peel, and we can both get what we want. So you need to ask you need to give information. This is completely different to the other form of negotiation where you try to keep things close. This one, you're giving away as much information as you can. And you want to be looking for differences between what you offer. What are capabilities that they have that you don't have? What are resources that they have that you don't have? What are resources and capabilities that you have that they don't have? Maybe it's personnel. Maybe it's um, relationships where they can enter into relationships with other people, connections. What is it? Take time. You need to really learn how to be a good listener, to ask questions, to wait, to listen, to delve, to ask people stories about their background and what they're trying to move towards and what are their goals and what are their motivations. You want to be getting all of that stuff out. And then you want to bring that information together and see if you can generate lots of ideas. And in brainstorming, often brainstorming goes wrong, but one of the best techniques for brainstorming is to actually sit down and say, we've got to come up with 20 solutions. And we've talked about this before. Um, and let's think about what are some really weird and wacky things we could do. And, and often the best solution is a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but unless you put that all on the table, you can't come up with those kind of strange solutions. Um, I was just in a, in a meeting this morning just where I invited somebody for a coffee, just to have a conversation about um, who they were and their background, just to click, connect via LinkedIn. And as I kept on asking questions and as I kept on finding about, I, I discovered things about them that I could then speak into, I could offer my services because they weren't aware of those. But the question was, um, tell me more, let me know, what's the reason and how did that go? Uh, what's worked before? What hasn't worked before? Um, what do you like to do? What don't you like to do? What has worked really well? What has succeeded in the past? What hasn't succeeded in the past? The more you get that whole story and you create that environment, now, often it's really good, if you can, to have that conversation over a few different occasions because that allows you to kind of reflectively be creative and think about things. Often people are too quick to want to deal with stuff. Even, even just as I've mentioned before, let's just go away, let's have lunch together, 
Um, let's have a coffee. Let's just get away from this environment. Really interestingly, different kinds of even the building, the rooms you're in, um, can affect your ability to think creatively. So we know that even small spaces are really good for negotiation of details when you want to be really specific. But big open spaces or high ceilings tend to help people be more creative or in nature if you've got plants and greenery and space that seems to help people to be creative. So maybe it's helpful to, to move into different spaces as you're negotiating. So the difference between this one and the previous form of negotiation is this one you're letting it all out. You, you are assuming that you are collaborating and you're working out a way to move together, whereas the other one is more win-lose where you're kind of keeping things close. So have a go. Go and form some partnerships with people and, and try some negotiation. Maybe try this at home with your parents, uh, with your partners, with your children, uh, with your friends. Maybe somebody asks, uh, what are we going to go and do for dinner tonight? Um, rather than just those first couple of solutions. Maybe say, what else do we like? What have we done in the past? And try to see if you can create an even better solution that you might not have thought of just off the top of your head.